Joining me live is Australia's former ambassador to Lebanon, Ian Palmer. Thank you so much for joining us. So what can you tell us about the, the bridging proposal and does it actually meet the demands of both Israel and Hamas? Well, at this stage, of course, the uh, details have not been made public, but from the various things that have been said, it seems to be building on a concession that uh, Hamas uh, appeared to make uh, about a month ago, saying that they would be prepared to discuss permanent withdrawal of, of Israeli troops, which uh, is a fundamental demand for them, uh, at the end of the first stage of the ceasefire. The ceasefire is really in three parts. Uh, the first one would be just for six weeks would be a temporary ceasefire, and the female hostages and elderly would be would be released at, at that time. Then there would be, after that, a, a permanent ceasefire with the male hostages being released and then followed after that by the uh, release or, or, or by Hamas of the remains of those who have died. There, are, there would also be prisoner swaps uh, in the sense that for the hostages that, uh, that Hamas would, would release. Uh, Israel would release some uh, Palestinian prisoners from Israeli jails. Now, there are arguments about that as well. But the, the big issue seems to be that uh, uh, at, at this stage, both Israel and Hamas are uh, not nearly as optimistic uh, about the uh, outcome of these talks as, uh, as President Biden has been. Uh, the other factor, uh, I mean, in, in fact, uh, uh, Hamas has said that uh, they are an, an illusion. So they are, they are very negative about them. But the, the, the other factor is that the Biden administration is putting pressure on all parties to, uh, uh, to be very careful not to take action, which could actually put the, the very, very delicate talks at risk before they resume in Cairo in this coming week. And as we just saw on, on your news package just now, uh, there have been several Israeli strikes in, in Gaza, but also in, uh, in the West Bank and also in, in Lebanon, which uh, certainly won't do, do much to uh, heighten the atmosphere of, uh, for, 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 for the talks. But um, something I, I might mention uh, is that there was a most interesting opinion poll that was published over the weekend, which was uh, done by a Channel 4, the Israeli channel, and it showed that... 63% uh, of Israelis polled actually did want a ceasefire and hostage exchange immediately now. Um, and only 12% were opposed to it. About 25% expressed uh, no, no opinion. Uh, but, uh, but the point is Netanyahu can't ignore those sorts of figures. So he'll have to be aware of that. But at the same time, uh, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu will be aware that if he does agree to a ceasefire, he has a, a, a strong risk that his government will fall because two of his very right-wing ministers have said they'll withdraw from the government if uh, there's a ceasefire without the full destruction of Hamas. He also has some difficulties within his own uh, um, his own military command because uh, uh, the defence minister Galat has said that he doesn't think that full victory is is achievable, uh, whereas. Prime Minister Netanyahu has been saying that that is the, the only acceptable goal. And as well as that, his own military is saying that his forces, that the Israeli forces, having fought for 10 months, um, are exhausted and they need uh, to, to have a break and that a ceasefire would help them no matter what happens after that. So there, there's a, a lot riding on all of this. Everything that happens in the coming week at the ceasefire talks in Cairo will be particularly important and maybe the most important week coming up of the uh, uh, of the entire war. All right, we'd better wrap it up there. But uh, Ian Palmer, thank you as always for your time and expertise today. You're welcome.